Happy Industrial Water Week, Scaling Up Nation. Trace Blackmore here, your host for Scaling Up H2O. And folks, we are celebrating Cooling Wednesday. That's right, an entire week of celebrating industrial water treatment. An entire week just for us to recognize what an incredible industry that we are in. And we are celebrating it on Wednesday with cooling. Now, yesterday was boiler, so we were talking about heating things up. That meant putting BTUs into the system. Well, now we're taking BTUs out, and that's how we cool. Folks, I hope that you are doing something to celebrate this amazing holiday. And what I am doing this week is I am bringing the Association of Water Technologies Conference to you. So if you were not able to be there, don't worry. We are bringing it to you all this week. And we are going to start out our interview series with Janet Stout. Now, you know Janet Stout from episode nine. And Janet told us everything that we needed to start to learn about Legionella. And Janet has really pioneered everything that we know about Legionella. She lovingly calls herself a Legionellologist. She made that term up, but she says that's what she does. She is a P. PhD and all she does is study Legionella. I consider her a friend and I have learned a tremendous amount from her. So ladies and gentlemen, if you will, here is Janet Stout. Walking around the AWT conference hall and I found Legionella expert Janet Stout. How are you, Janet? I'm fantastic. I love AWT, and I especially love talking to you, Trace. Well, likewise, Janet. And Janet, what's going on here? You're you're selling BLT sandwiches. You're in a chef's outfit. What's going on? <laughs> I know. Aren't I cute? The, the little hat. Absolutely. Um, so the the what we're talking about is BLT, best Legionella test. So it's not the test; it's everything around the test, just like a good BLT sandwich. So we have expertise. We have multidisciplinary team. And so because we're talking about best Legionella test, BLT, we're serving real BLTs with a little Corona chaser. So I hope you're hungry, Trace. What has been the biggest question you've received at the conference this year around Legionella? Well, I think uh, one of the things actually that, that I'm talking to people about, because most of the AWT people are pretty knowledgeable about Legionella. So this morning I gave a talk about the other waterborne pathogens talked about in the CMS memo, the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services, talks about organisms that you're not familiar with, like Stenotrophomonas and Acinetobacter, Pseudomonas, and really a bad actor, non-tuberculous mycobacteria. So I gave a talk about that. I can send you a link to the talk if you'd like. It'd be great. Absolutely. And we actually spoke a little bit on that when we interviewed a few weeks ago, which is coming up in the next month or so. Oh, I can't wait. And your audience will love it because you are just so terrific. Your show is just great. Well, I appreciate that. Always good talking with you. Have a great show. Thanks so much, Trace. Nation, Janet has come back and recorded another episode. So over the next few months, you will hear from Janet again. Now, Janet is telling us about some things that are changing. So I know that you are going to want to listen to that episode. While we're on the topic of Legionella, here are a few interviews that I did with other people in that industry. Nation, I'm here with Christian Majeska of IDEX, and what are you showing off at this year's AWT conference? So it's the next generation culture test for Legionella pneumophila. So this looks a little different than your traditional spread plate culture, which you know, trying to identify some colonies on a plate. This is a liquid culture test, which is kind of neat because... Legionella pneumophila grows in water naturally. And so what we do is offer a way for laboratories to grow it up in it that is a very simple to use, very consistent, and has, a great, has great accuracy. So a question that comes to my mind is uh, false positives, false negatives. What do you have to say about that? So we, I think, are now our fifth peer-reviewed publication. So what we've done is we've had outside laboratories taking regular old samples, part of their daily business, nine different laboratories from different countries, and they've done side-by-sides. So they've split samples and they've compared the IDEX Leech Alert culture test to CDCs, potable and non-potable, to the ISO method for potable water, and they've said 
they've come back with the results. So what they found every single time is the lead alert test is as or more sensitive than those traditional spread flight methods. So what that means is sometimes it's more sensitive. That means that lead alert is capable because it's a new design, it's a new technology, it's a new way of thinking about growing up these bacteria. It's able to find Legion Ellenomophila that's being missed by those traditional methods. Do something that is from a public health standpoint, and frankly a water treater's concern, we want to avoid. Sounds very interesting. I don't think we're going to have time to talk about it today, but I'd love to invite you back on Scaling Up H2O so we can really dive into this topic. We love to. There's nothing we like better than having conversations with the people who use our products and who work with laboratories that use our products. And so I'd love to have the conversation. We love the questions. They always make our explanations clearer and our products stronger. Awesome. And I have to ask, how are you celebrating Industrial Water Week? a great question. We're going to be talking about it. Fair enough. Thanks so much. I'm at the Sandy Pure booth with Alberto Comasi, and we are going to talk about all things Sandy Pure. Tell us a little bit about that. Absolutely. So we're, we'll throw some Italiano in here. We'll throw some Mannaggia Miseri Italiano. So what we do is we do supplemental disinfection. That's what we deal with. And what we're presenting here at the AWT conference are our monochloramine generators. Uh, for building water application, so for supplemental disinfection. Um, we have a cooling tower unit specifically designed for cooling tower. We have a monitoring panel, uh, which is in compliance with the 1061 directive for VA hospitals. And we have also another unit for specifically designed for cold water application. So that's what we're doing. Uh, we are uh, very big and, you know, we believe we, on science. So everything we do is validated through science and we always publish our data. We did a commercial corner today uh, talking about all the regulatory uh, issues and stuff that are going on with supplemental disinfection, which is becoming like much bigger and bigger because down the road you're, you know, you're dealing with public, public health, public safety. Um, and I'm going to talk uh, on the panel tomorrow about supplemental disinfection. So I'm, I'm very happy we got this opportunity to share our message with AWT and especially we were at the NSF conference um, until yesterday which it's kind of weird they put them the, co the right, conference right. the same days. But it was good to be there. It was good to see what the regulators had to say and kind of share that message with the AWT people here in Palm Springs. So we're happy to be here. And guess what? We're going to be at the Young Professional Happy Hour tonight. So well, there you go. Just come there and meet us there. We'll, we'll get you a drink. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much. And thanks for educating us Absolutely. about Santa Pure. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Legionella has really started to become another leg of the industrial water treaters capabilities and issues and all the things that we have to do on a regular basis. So if you do not know about Legionella, your customers probably don't either. And the issue with that is the assumption is that you are doing something about it. So at the very least, I urge you to learn at least who is responsible for doing what and helping the education happen with your customer. When nobody is having dialogue when it comes to Legionella, nobody is getting anywhere. So please help have that conversation with each one of your clients because that is a tide that will raise all industrial water treatment boats. The next person I ran into was Logan of Odyssey. And Logan has been a great supporter of the show. Odyssey is a French company. And Logan stopped by the office a couple times. And I remember when I first started scaling up H2O, I think it was around May of 2017. And he told me that he just loved the idea that we were doing a podcast. And he listened every time we had a new episode drop. And he told me he loved my accent. Nation, I'm here with Odyssey's Logan Manarenshi. Logan, what are you doing here at the AWT conference? Tell us about what you're talking to customers about. So we are talking about the Filming Amiens product. So the idea is, well, mainly now is to do social. You know, we like to meet people. We like to see how the industry is growing, is moving. So it's very interesting to see these kind of things. Well, awesome. And I can't notice that your accent's a little bit different. Uh, Texas, is it? It's Eastern Texas. All right, I, know, thought, like, I thought that's what it was. Uh, I'm, <laughs> so I'm curious, what are you going to be doing to celebrate Industrial Water Treatment Week? 
I just will listen to the Scaling Up podcast every day, which is way better. <laughs> well, there you go. I couldn't ask for a better answer. Thanks so much for chatting with us. Thank you, Tracy. Nation, back in April of this year, we covered an episode. It was episode 81. It was about pure water for the world. And the person that we interviewed, her name was Carolyn Mube, And she told us all of the great things that Pure Water for the World was doing. And Pure Water for the World is the charity that AWT backs to help bring clean drinking water to some of the most impoverished areas in the world. So ladies and gentlemen, here is Rye Thompson speaking on Pure Water for the World. I'm here with Rye Thompson, and Rye, you're with Pure Water for the World, but you're a water treater, so help explain that to us. Thanks, Trace. Yes, I did spend uh, a wonderful four years in the industry as an owner and operator, and uh, I did leave the water industry a year ago. It's still near and dear to my heart. However, I am now a volunteer with Pure Water for the World. That is not my full-time employment. I do have a full-time job uh, doing other things, but I was introduced to Pure Water for the World as an AWT member, actually joined Pure Water for the World uh, on a trip, one of their mission volunteer trips down to Honduras, which is an incredible opportunity. Less than 60 people a year in the world get to do that trip with Pure Water, and it just happens to be that the Association of Water Technologies has that very dedicated relationship with Pure Water to do those trips. So I invite anyone that is even thinking about volunteering internationally, this is a wonderful, best-kept secret in the world of volunteer tourism. So a question I'm sure several people have stopped by and asked you is, hey, AWT is an organization that other people join, and now this organization is supporting another organization called Pure Water for the World. Help us understand that. It's a great question, and yes, a lot of folks try to make that bridge. How do industrial water treaters make that, that jump over to a water charity that's based outside of the world? And my answer to that is, this is a, an organization a lean organization that's sort of got that that individualism that a lot of water treaters have of go-getting and self-starting and get stuff done. They do things on a very, very lean budget. And when uh, the history of this, from what I understand, the Association of Water Technologies was looking for a dedicated charity that was very effective. And the fact of the matter is this organization works in the two poorest countries in the Western Hemisphere, Haiti and Honduras. And what a dollar does in those two countries for aid and for helping folks far exceeds what a dollar does here in the United States and many organizations. So, but making that jump from industrial water treatment to just pure charity, it, it's, it's hard to understand. So again, I, I would invite somebody to come on down on one of the trips to, to, to get some more information on that. Now you've actually done that. So what happens when you're on one of these trips? And you're showing me some photos right now. They look fantastic. What was your experience? Yeah, so right here in the booth, for folks that do stop by, I like to point out, there are half a dozen AWT members that are in the back of a truck crossing a river in Honduras. And it's a wonderful photo. And you see all smiles on the folks. That was day number four of six. AWT members, upon landing in the country, on day two, they are installing bio sand water filters in people's homes. These homes do not have running water. Folks are still using a pail to go to a water source, be it a river or perhaps a hose that's coming from some water source way up the hill that's running downstream. They interrupt it. It's not even a tea coupling. They just interrupt it, put some water into a bucket and then plug it back in so it can go to other folks down downstream. All the while, when they put that hose down, the pigs are running by, the chickens are running by. One of the questions I get asked a lot, is, and the AWT membership is very generous, they said, hey, how many filters do you need? I'll send down filters, I'll send down equipment. And it's the, really the starting point to explain to folks, wow, we don't have a water line under pressure running into these homes. People are still using a bucket and they're using surface water. So what they, the AWT members get to see in day one and two and two and a half, if you will, day three, is how to actually install these biosan water filters in people's homes. It's very hands-on. Well, it sounds incredible. I know we had Carolyn on a couple of months ago. It was about this time last year, I think it was. Carolyn, the director, uh, the executive director for Pure Water. Right, and I think she uh, stepped down recently, didn't she? She retired after 17 years, uh, and there is still a transition on that, but she announced her retirement in January, and uh, there's a new executive director search underway. An incredible woman that, that took the reins. 
Awesome. Well, we appreciate you sharing what you do here for Pure Water for the World. I know the nation wants to learn more. If they do want to seek that out, where do they go? Well, you can go to purewaterfortheworld.org, which is uh, the website that they maintain. And one of the initiatives that myself as an AWT member and certainly a couple other folks that have come by the booth and, and have got their cards, we are trying to increase the visibility of this organization and make it more relevant to AWT members. Water is what brings us all together. And what this charity does is provide the most basic needs for folks. We're talking about clean water to drink and basic sanitation, which includes having a latrine. Because right now, in the schools that we go to, kids do not even have a place to poop and pee. So really is making a difference. The dollars, the donations that come in from the silent auction are really important. The, the, the straight donations that come in are well, well used. Well, thanks so much for helping us understand a little bit more about Pure Water for the World. Thanks, Trace. Ry and I were speaking after we had that brief interview, and he really wants to get Scaling Up H2O on site so I can capture everything that they are doing. My schedule is just jam-packed, so I hope I can get that to happen, but if we can't, Rye is going to record an episode there, and we are going to let you know all of the cool things that they are doing with other Association of Water Technologies members. Now, the next person I ran into was Jim Lukinich, and I remember the first time I saw Jim Lukinich present. I didn't live in Atlanta at the time, so I flew down here for the technical training. We didn't have multiple courses as we do today. Back then, it was just one, and Jim was one of the trainers as he is today. Folks, when I saw Jim present, that's when I knew I wanted to be part of the technical training committee. He was just incredible in how he could share the passion that he had about this industry with other people. So, ladies and gentlemen, here's Jim Lukinich. Nation, I just found my friend, AWT royalty, Jim Lukinitz. Jim, how are you, my friend? I am fantastic. How about you? I am always doing well when I can spend some time with you. And of course, you and I are spending time together at the AWT 2019 conference. Jim, I'm curious, what are some of the things that you're finding at this show that are giving you some ideas for some things that you can do when you get back home? Okay, so we have a, a need in our company in one of our market segments for, most of you are familiar with water cycle on the cooling water side. So I needed to discuss like with down, right? French Creek the application on their, of their downhole sat for energy services side, for oil and gas. And I needed to make sure it would do the things we needed it to do before we implement that as, a, as in a way to report our uh, analytical results and graphically display the solubilities of the different deposit forming species. So we, I had a great discussion with Rob Ferguson, the famous Rob Ferguson. Right? Who was a guest on the show. Yes. And I'm sure that it went over by two hours because he was a guest <laughs> on the show. It was a longer show. <laughs> the Denora, Myox people, we had some interesting discussions about some things they have in development that they haven't released to market. They have some IP that they've got to, uh, or patents that they have to file before they do. That's going to be very interesting for not only us, but for the, the AWT membership as well. So, Yeah, what a great place to come to because pretty much everybody that sells to our industry is here. And we can have some of the great conversations about some of the issues that we're having and some of the problems that we're trying to solve that we need their assistance with. So, yeah, and if you look, like right now, uh, secondary disinfection for uh, potable water and hospitals and, and other facilities, but primarily for the healthcare industry, a lot of the AWT membership is getting into that secondary disinfection application and the monochloramine devices that are devices present here is getting a lot of buzz. You see people, a lot of people gathering there and I talked to some of them and a lot of these folks are implementing the Sanapure type monochloramine units. I highly recommend them. There's some other chlorine dioxide generators around that I hadn't seen before or maybe didn't notice before. So I've talked to them about their 
generating devices. All in all, a great show. Oh, yeah. You're here. Well, there you go. That's all you need. <laughs> Everybody wants to know, how are you going to be celebrating Industrial Water Week? You know, I, I, I might take a trip to uh, Antarctica and sample the quality of the ice cores from 200,000 years ago. Something like that, you know? You know, if it was anybody else, I would think that was BS, but I know you too well. You probably already have the trip book. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. And, and you know, I'm going to make sure I bring my uh, swimwear because, you know, climate change and everything, there, it's going to be a wonderful beach, beach weekend. You know? Well, it would definitely be cooler than here. It's 112 degrees right now, folks. Jim, thanks so much for stopping by and talking sure with enough, us. Trace. Now, Jim came on on episode 12. He was one of my earlier guests. And of course, he's been on, I believe, just about every episode that I've covered at a technical training event. I think it's about time we get Jim back on. So I'll have to make sure we schedule that. Nation, if you remember episode 15, that was with Jack Walker, and he was the recipient of the Ray Baum Water Treater of the Year Award several years ago. Well, his daughter ran into me, and here is Bonnie Walker. Ladies and gentlemen of the Scaling Up Nation, I just ran into Bonnie Walker. Bonnie, this is your last year on the AWT board. What's going on with AWT? A lot of great things. I'm really excited about not only working with the young professionals, but also with charity. We have a wonderful charity, and I think that it's going to go a lot of places. We had a great silent auction. It was very successful. So my new passion now is getting the word out for the, for the charity, getting fresh water out to Honduras and Haiti areas and people that really need it. The story they shared this morning with me was uh, right now the money that we're raising is to help a community of 45 with a school and the children are currently drinking water out of puddles and that's their livelihood. So if we can bring fresh water just to them, 45 people in the schools, then that's really, I think, we're effective. So water treatment, not only for industrial, but for people too. And that's what AWT, I think, um, is really can help. Yeah, living here, we're so far removed from that. It's yes. hard to even imagine it. So right. for you to bring awareness to that. Yes. And we're water treaters. Yes. We don't have a exactly. job without water to right. treat. Right. So so why not do something to help yes. the local community? Yes. So supporting my young professionals. So everybody listening out there that you're not sure what you want to do with your life, definitely water treatment's are great. It, you can go into so many things from marketing, to actually the water treatment, engineering, chemistry. There's so many different aspects of the water treatment world. So I definitely would look into that if you're a young professional looking for a home because it's a career, not a job. That's well said. Now, the question I have for you okay. next is how are you celebrating Industrial Water Week? Well, how I'm celebrating it is, again, I think I'm going to start focusing on the charity again, Pure Water for the World, um, to, because that's what um, AWT is, is helping with right now. So I think on um, give like Give Tuesdays and stuff, I think maybe one day during Industrial Week, we can really concentrate on the people that don't have running water and flowing water. And we do filtration every day for our cooling towers. Why can't we help filtration for, for people and drinking water? That's a great message. Thanks so much for talking with us. Oh, thank you. Bonnie serves on the board of the Association of Water Technologies. And like I said in an earlier episode, we could not have a convention or an association like we do when we talk about the Association of Water Technologies without people like Bonnie who serve. So thank you for all the people that allow the things to happen to come to be. We would not have them if it weren't for you. And thank you so much for volunteering. Now, folks, if you're not a member of the Association of Water Technologies and you want to learn more about that, go to the Association of Water Technologies website. That's awt.org and click on membership. For those listeners out there that do not practice the same type of water treatment that I do, I promise there is an association out there that needs your membership. Now, if you just pay money, you're not going to get anything out of it, and I don't recommend that you even go to the website. But if you join and figure out how you can contribute, I promise you it will change your career path. Well, Nation, I hope you enjoy my next few interviews as I walk through the AWT Annual Convention and Expo. I'm here at the Endotherm booth of the AWT conference, and I am with Will Wilson. How are you, Will? Doing very good, Trace. Will, tell us a little bit about Endotherm. Endotherm is, a, is probably the newest thing to come out in water treatment. 
It's an additive for closed loop systems that actually improves energy efficiency by improving the heat transfer characteristics of the water. Uh, what it does is uh, it's an organic surfactant, breaks down the surface tension of the water, which allows the water to make more contact within the pipework so that your heat energy is basically touching more of the, the coils, the, the boiler tubes, the chiller tubes, and transferring more heat. What that does is it allows the building to hit temperature set points quicker because they can get more heat energy into the room or get heat energy out of the room with each cycle. And it allows the equipment to operate at a more optimal range. So your boiler is running at higher efficiency because you have a colder return temperature. Your chiller is running at a more optimal range because you have a better delta T. Well, cool. Thanks for sharing that with us. Thanks, Trace. Have a good day. With Brian Katarski of Aqua Phoenix, who I lovingly call Goose. Absolutely. How'd you get that nickname, Goose? I've had that nickname since I was a baby. So I've been Goose since I was like literally a year old. Um, I kind of shook it a little bit here as I get older and a little bit more professional, not much. Um, but the reality is when I die, um, they're going to have to put Goose in my obituary. Otherwise, nobody's going to come to my funeral. Uh, more than once, you've asked me to start calling you Brian and, and stop calling you Goose. It didn't stick, and now 10,000 people are hearing me introduce you as Goose. No worries at all. I think the few people that don't call me Goose are my mom and um, maybe my dad. And that's about it. Well, awesome. I want to know, what are you guys showcasing here at this year's AWT conference? So really excited with H2Tronics being our acquisition we made a couple years ago. And one of the big things we have is our panel builder program, and it allows you within five minutes to put together a complete quote for a, a finished panel that we built in about 10 days. We can have to you in about 10 days. Um, but in five minutes, you'll have actually a diagram of it. You'll have a line item quote that shows you list price and uh, cost. And then you also have all the PDF documents to support what's in that panel as well. So everything from the controller down to the probes, down to the valves, you'll have the PDFs to go with that. So anybody that's doing new construction, new bid work, that type of thing, it'll save you a ton of time. Well, awesome. And what are you doing to celebrate Industrial Water Week? Oh, we have a whole bunch of stuff planned. So our uh, marketing team is going nuts. Um, they're really excited about it. One of the big things we did last year that we had a lot of uh, success with was we had our staff go through, just our employees, and try to pronounce really complicated chemical names, right? Like isothazolin and things like that, that most of our, our folks just don't even know what it is. And so every now and then we plug in one of our chemists, and of course they're all smart and geeky and they know exactly how to pronounce it. So we're definitely going to be doing that, but we have something lined up for every day of the week once it comes around. That sounds awesome. Well, thanks for chatting with us. Absolutely, man. Thanks for stopping by. I'm here with Michael Byerly, owner of Global Water Technologies. Michael, tell us what you're doing here at the AWT 2019 convention. Oh, well, right now, just uh, getting ready to start the Young Professionals uh, Happy Hour. So, yes, we're going to get some drink on, probably. I guess they're, they're, they're having some alcoholic beverages there. So what are some of the things that you are learning at this convention? Uh, just broadening the horizon on uh, what's going on with Legionnaires, obviously, Legionella. Um, learning from Janet Stout and also uh, new technology during the, uh, the expo. So the question is, what are you going to do to celebrate Industrial Water Week? Ooh, I think I'm going to fire up our LinkedIn page and just take, uh, take part in the festivities. I love it. Always good seeing you, buddy. Good seeing you. I'm with Landon Marcus of A Lovey Bond, and you guys are exhibiting here at the 2019 AWT trade show in lovely Palm Springs, California. You know, it's hot out here. It is. It's a little warm. So what are some of the things that you are showing off this year? Uh, in our Lovey Bond booth, we have our water testing instruments, our MD640 that does PTSA and fluorescein in the same unit, along with 120 different parameters. Uh, we, have, uh, we manufacture our own dip slides reagents. We also have the ability to private label for customers. But, uh, you know, we have some exciting things here at the booth. And what's something that you have learned as a product of being here at the AWT annual conference? Uh, I'm, you know, I'm fairly new still. I've, um, I've been in the industry for almost exactly a year. I get a lot out of it because I get, this is like everybody's under one roof. So I get to kind of walk around and check out the new AWT members what they're about, different water treaters, and then also I get to kind of take a sneak peek on the competition that's here too. So, oh, there you go. So, no, nothing wrong yeah, with yeah. that. That's yeah, everybody's know. doing yeah. it. You're they're just one that admits it. They're looking at us too. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. And you just came off of the same panel. I interviewed Michelle Farmery earlier where you were one of the young professionals where everybody at the AWT was asking questions. How do we understand these young professionals, these millennial generation people? What were some of the things that you gained from the audience being a panelist? You know, you know, what? we were talking about this after it was over in, in our group on the stage. We were actually really 
it kind of excited us that there were so many good questions. Like people cared. The people that were asking the questions were excited to, I felt that they were excited to be there. And the, the questions they asked were very direct. And you knew that when they were asking it, like that's something they, they wanted to know. And we, we really got a lot out of it because it seemed like they cared a lot about how to, you know, keep young professionals in the industry and bring them in. So. Yeah, I thought it was very well attended. I enjoyed moderating it. So uh, yeah, lots of great. Oh, I appreciate yeah. that. Thank you. You're not getting paid for that, but thank you for saying that. Well, thanks for everything that you're, you're doing here. Thanks for being on that panel, and thanks for coming on Scaling Up H2O. Yes, sir. Thank you. I'm here with Rob Reynolds. You are here at the AWT 2019 conference. What are some of the things that you're finding out? This is my first time here, so it's been great to walk around and meet some faces that I've emailed with and you know talked to over the phone and you know get to find out a lot about the industry. And I think the main thing that I was looking for when I came here was to find better cloud solutions that we can use to you know get our controllers online and you know make my life easier servicing all the accounts. So, and were you successful? Yeah, we, we saw some interesting ones and talked to the Wallchem guys and Prominent. And, they were all here. You know, they're all here. So you now, I, I can't it. help but notice you have the prestigious CWT ribbon on your name badge. When did you get your CWT? Why did you decide to get it? And what has it done for you? So I took the test last year. And it's an examination, by the way. But, but I, I hear what you're saying. Yes, I've listened to the show. I forgot that. So I took it last year, and I got busy in the summer season, so I kind of put off doing the whole application. But then, once it was getting towards the date where I took the test, I made sure to get everything in and, you know, finally actually get through the whole process. So I just got it this year, actually. Now, what has it done for you since you now have those three initials behind your name? So, I mean, it's definitely given me more confidence to go out in the field and kind of show people that I, I know what I'm talking about. And, you know, as a young person, you know, it, it gives you some, some backup and, you know, you get to say, hey, you know, I know my stuff and get a little more respect from people and, you know, they, they listen to you or as sometimes before, you know, as a young person, you're given new ideas, which... You know, sometimes they're kind of out there, but you want to try something different, then people kind of listen to what you have to say a little more. Oh, there you go. So, Rob, the Scaling Up Nation wants to know, how are you going to celebrate Industrial Water Week? I'm going to go jump in a pool and, you know, frolic in the water. But there you go. Connect it with water. That's how you do that. Well, thanks so much for chatting with us. Awesome. Thanks, buddy. Thank you. So another day down of Industrial Water Week, Cooling Wednesday. So this is right smack dab in the middle of it. I hope you are doing something to recognize what an awesome career you are a part of. And I hope you're doing something to celebrate with somebody else. My team, we're all going out for tacos tonight. Why not? We are celebrating Industrial Water Treatment Week with tacos. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you are enjoying this entire week of a holiday just for us. And I will be back at you tomorrow with Wastewater Thursday. <laughs>